Hello, everybody, and welcome to the channel. So we've got some Overwatch news to cover today, and we know what's going to be shown at BlizzCon. We've got a new map, and we've got some behind-the-scenes development footage from Iliari, which shows abilities that they decided to remove from the game, most notably Flashbang. That's right, yeah, they were going to give her a flashbang. <laughs> anyway, let's begin with this. So this is the new map. This was announced, I believe, yesterday. Um, it's Samoa. Now, you're probably thinking, well... What could this be? What could this actually mean? What could it mean? Well, I'm going to tell you what this means. It means that a certain hero, a certain Mauga, is most likely going to show up at BlizzCon. <laughs> but if he doesn't, then I'm going to be very surprised. Or at least he's going to show up in the season after Season 7. So that would be Season 8. <laughs> um, so yeah, Samoa. It looks quite nice, the picture does. It's, this is all we can see so far. Um, it looks very vibrant, very colourful. Um, and yeah, we, we do believe that Mauga is Samoan. Um, I think it's actually confirmed, isn't it, in the law? But yeah, they do actually go on to say a little bit here, though. And they say, join Oh Really Jared and Aaron Keller during the Overwatch League Grand Finals on October the 1st as they dive into Season 7's new control map, Samoa. Now, actually, what I will say is Aaron Keller is first and foremost a map designer. So anything on new maps, I would listen to him because he will absolutely break it down in super granular details. So that's going to be really interesting to look forward to. So yeah, I, I, honestly, I'm looking forward to that. I think that'll be pretty good. Um, it looks nice and uh, let's just hope it plays nice. Kind of interesting though that it's a, a control map though, isn't it? You'd think it would be uh, for the new game mode, but I guess, you know, they're just like, whatever, we've got enough Flashpoint maps. So let's not bother with that. So yeah, interesting stuff. Okay, the next thing is um, the fact that we've got confirmation of what's happening at BlizzCon. So this is BlizzCon. It's obviously happening at the uh, Anaheim Convention Center, and it's the 3rd to the 4th of November. And uh, yeah, there's a bunch of things going on. So we can see like, you know, there's all this stuff happening here, which is great. But for us Overwatch fans, we've got the Overwatch World Cup is taking place there, which of course we know, uh, as is tradition. And uh, this here, most notably, meet the new hero, and it's a tank, and there's a couple of bullet holes. Now, we do believe this is going to be Malga, and I think the fact that we've got a Samoa map coming out in the next season does kind of indicate that the season after that, it will be him, right? There's probably going to be a lot of lore information on the new map pointing towards him, and maybe we'll start getting teasers about him uh, as we get closer to this launch. Indeed, if it is him, but I would probably imagine it is. Um, maybe we can take some things away from here, a bit of speculation, you know, bullet holes in this. He's probably got a chain gun because he looks like a Talon heavy trooper. And we know they've got big chain guns and things like that. So that's probably what he does. Um, so yeah, cool information. Nice little bit of news. Okay, so I'm really looking forward to this. I've not read through this article. So we're going to read through this together because it's got ability clips of cancelled abilities. And I love this stuff because you will be able to see stuff in future heroes down the line that they use that didn't work on this hero, or even things they took from other heroes and added to this hero. It's really, really cool. It's like a great look into the way the heroes are designed. So they say, Iliari is taken Overwatch 2 by storm, or rather by the power of 1,000 burning suns. We're incredibly happy to see that players are enjoying her gameplay, personality, and story. To provide a little more in-depth and insight into how Iliari came to be who she is today, we on the Overwatch team, design uh, on the Overwatch design team, thought we'd share some of how her abilities were created through early prototypes. Heroes can be inspired by many things. Sometimes heroes are made from whatever prototypes of abilities we think are cool or have a positive impact on gameplay. Anna is a great example of this. Parts of her kit were made before her character and story ever existed. And I say actually another great example of this was Sigma. In fact, Sigma is really interesting because Sigma, um, I think Sigma was meant to be Mauga. But uh, they were like, this doesn't make any sense. He's got a load of gravity abilities. What are we doing? And then they came up with Sigma. And you guys actually might remember the insanely good Sigma origin story. It's, it's literally the best Overwatch origin story. It's incredible. They do staff a favor and go and check it out right now. It is so good. So good. But anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> that happened. All right, let's just move on. So in, the, in Iliadi's case, uh, we had a strong starting point because we knew we wanted the theme to be the hero around the sun. These themes inspired by her, inspired her early abilities as well as her internal code name, Solar. Prototyping is a journey through different questions, scenarios, and ideas. The goal is to test out and experiment with new things. We ask questions such as, how does this ability feel in relation to other abilities currently in game? Is the ability making noticeable impact in a match? Are there enough options for counterplay? What does it feel like to land a hit 
or a miss with this ability. We'd like to offer a little insight into that journey and show you some of our prototyping that led to Iliari. As we dive into Solar's design journey, please keep in mind that these abilities and videos were placeholders through her development. So yeah, you know, this isn't what, what it would look like. They, I mean, you can see here, they're using Ash's model <laughs> as the, uh, as the, you know, the test for Iliari. They, they do that a lot. Anyway, so they, they say this, oh dear, prototype blind ability. Now, I remember when the stuff first came out about Iliari when they tried to, t well, when I guess they did teaser. And I was like, oh no, it's a hero with a flashbang. Please not. Um, but they did come to their senses quite early, apparently. So they say this, one of the earliest prototypes we played around was a blinding ability. After all, this is a hero who gets her power from the sun. Solar would throw a grenade-like sun orb or the spicy basketball in the video below, which would explode and blind enemies with its AoE. So let's take a look at this. So, <laughs> Dude, it's great. I love it. I love it. Literally is the basketball that gets thrown out, like like <laughs> the throw animation with Ash as well. <laughs> mm, so that would blind you. Okay. That's kind of worrying because that literally is a flashbang. In, in fact, it looks like a gimped version of a flashbang from uh, any other tactical shooter. Anyway, <laughs> they go on to say, we often use models that are already in-game while we're still working through prototyping a new ability, which is why Solar's model looks awfully familiar when she's dunking on enemies with a basketball blind. The team experimented with the physics of this ability and how it would affect enemies. After a few changes, the team, decided, the team added visual effects of Solar jumping into the air and throwing the blind down onto her enemies. <laughs> In the end, we moved away from a blind ability because of the somewhat hidden effectiveness and frustration caused when played against. No shit. <laughs> Solar didn't feel a noticeable impact using blind, but the person getting blinded felt too much of an impact. Yes, yes, I think they did. Did they uh, lose sight in the game? Losing control of your character feels terrible, right? So, uh, yes, you could have, we could have told you this before we went through and built it. It's crazy. We ultimately decided that a full screen blind was too much for the type of action flow we're building in Overwatch. Yeah, it doesn't work in your game, guys. If I was in your design group meetings, I'd be like, nope, we're never having a flashbang. It is terrible. No, thank you. This isn't Valorant. Go away. <laughs> Apparently, no. So what's this then? So this is, however, the mobility of her leaping into the air felt very symbolic to a sunrise and was integrated into a finalized ultimate. Okay, so cool, because, you know, as they're working on this, you sort of see that kind of, that hand motion there was kind of new. You can sort of see the charge they've got working there with the gun. That's really cool, actually. Let's go through this one again. So jump into the air, sort of something going on there, throws a ball down. The charge you can sort of hear on the gun as well. And also see. It's really cool, like look, the multicolored effect there. Like this might be something we see come back in the future. This, that's probably the Overwatch Flash, <laughs> which would make sense. It would be the most insane. Like I've just taken a load of LSD and I'm like, Bwah! I'm a magic shrooms and everything. <laughs> that's what I see. <laughs> oh dear. But pretty cool. Also, who's that? Hero League, Hero League. <laughs> So, I mean, I guess the good takeaway from that is even messing around with all that stuff, it lets them design something through, I guess, design iteration and go, you know what, we'll use that on something else. Pretty cool. So, prototype healing ability and secondary fire healing. Solar's healing capabilities went through a lot of ideations and prototypes. One of the first ideas was an ability that created pockets of healing with a deployable drone. She would throw a drone grenade to allies and the drone would hover over them to heal. Uh, okay. So she's throwing a little snowball and it follows them and heals. Yeah, it's kind of weird that, isn't it? Like that would be frustrating to use, wouldn't it? Like if you were throw like having to throw that constantly on people, it would be super frustrating. I mean, I guess it would probably last a bit longer. I like how they've, they've blurred out the NVIDIA logo. <laughs> it's probably because they haven't got like, um, they haven't got any kind of sponsor deal with them, have they? Or, or they can't officially show. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, like, also, are you bringing this UI to the game for support? <laughs> that would be nice. Anyway, um, 
this is this looks kind of crap to be honest i mean i would be looking at this game now this is like it's a crap version of zen's orb and i i don't want it no i don't want it <laughs> pocket healing went through a lot of tweaks and adjustments for example one version provided more healing to lower hp allies but was limited in mobility another provided a burst of heal within the first second gives the allies a little more flexibility regarding their placement. There was also a super fun iteration where the drones would automatically track allies. Tell me that's what this video is. So the dr the drone chases you. Yeah, like they're just deploying the drone and it's going towards an ally. I mean, it looks kind of cool, but it is still probably kind of irritating that. <laughs> so that, that, I don't know about this one. I don't know. Like, I, I can see what they were trying. I think on paper, this probably sounded much better than it actually ended up sort of feeling like when they used it. It would have been... They should have just kept Snowball as well. That would have been amazing. <laughs> so I did. Amazing. I'm terrible. This is... Yeah, that's, that's like... Mm. This type of healing mechanic required a ton of management and attention, and we wanted something more strategic that allowed her to focus more uh, of her time using the solar rifle than a Eureka moment... Then a Eureka, Eureka moment came while looking at Torbjorn and Symmetra's turrets. We tried a healing turret mechanic with Symmetra during a Creator Experimental card in February 2022. And while it had multiple problems on her kit as a whole, players did enjoy the concept. From this, the healing artifact was born. Initially a hit scan healing projectile, it evolved to what it is now in order to, uh, to fulfill combat clarity and visual goals. Okay, so interesting that it was just a hit scan. Just immediately healed anything like bang, 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 bang. Yeah. That's actually kind of cool because you can see, obviously, the, the, the one we've got in the live game fires a healing projectile and it's like a big orb. And as they said, like that is for um, visual clarity reasons. And yeah, because that just looks like a stream of piss. <laughs> I'll be honest. Like, what's this? Yeah, not great. The big action. And it, it, it creates more impact as well, doesn't it? The actual one in the game. It's like boom, boom, boom. And it hits the target. It just feels better overall. It's kind of cool. You can sort of see like, why is she glowing here a little bit? And does that mean a weapon's charged or something? I don't know. Really interesting development stuff. Uh, then, Solar's secondary fire uh, came also a long way from start to finish. The first iteration was a burst heal that could pierce allies like Sojin's railgun, but it was on a hefty cooldown. Okay. Okay. Just come... What? It's like a... Yo, that would be cool. Like just firing blades of sun across the sky. Is this the old Genji ability from Overwatch PvE we should have got? <laughs> glued onto this. This is better. This is better than the Helo Beam because you can see what this is hitting. Oh my dear. Uh, what? What? This is actually sick. Look at that. Okay, they better have a good reason for getting rid of this. We wanted to give her a simple secondary fire to encourage players to support through damage, but the lengthy downtime made this ability feel too limiting. We pivoted to something single target, giving it a shorter cooldown. Oh, oh, this would be a space there. <laughs> After testing various uptimes and cooldowns, we landed on a simplified secondary that could be used often. Solar Rifle's ult gives us what we were looking for. Uh, ult fire, sorry, gives us what we're looking for with the added benefit of pockets of healing with healing pile. Ah, it's not as cool as the bloody healing boomerang thing. That looked amazing. Prototype ability, a uh, prototype, ultimate ability, I should say. Uh, there were a great many prototypes to Solar's ultimate, so we only look at a couple of them within this blog. Oh, it's kind of sad. Uh, one of the first ideas <laughs> uh, saw up to five enemies near solar and gave them a debuff we called solar flares solar flares would damage enemies reveal their location and increase their damage taken ah so this will be interesting because this is like them we'll probably see them take bits from failed experiments and push them into the final ability so let's have a look at this then so this the damage enemies reveal their location and increase their damage taken but it doesn't feel very impactful does it when you fire that off i'd imagine Hmm. Also interesting is the Genji icon. And also, why is the, an, there's an effect around the uh, the ult? It was Paul Say in there. It doesn't do that in the live game, does it? Unless I lost my mind. Anyway, while this ultimate 
Uh, the, the orange thing, I mean. Uh, while this ultimate was cool to play with, it wasn't that cool to play against. The debuff paired with the damage was a little too much, and the chaotic nature of the ultimate was frustrating to play against. Another iteration, Rift off Solar Flares, but the debuff was only applied to enemies with an area of effect, rather than targeting them automatically. The area would also heal allies, so there was quite a bit going on within that circle. All right, okay. I think we're going to see a jump up into the sky. Yeah. So kind of like Sigma, and then it heals and applies the solar debuff effect. Okay. Honestly, I'm not really feeling this one. This one kind of feels worse than the other one, <laughs> if I'm honest. Did Mercy just shout something then? Okay, yeah, I'm not feeling that one. I'm not feeling that. <laughs> Many versions of her ultimate increased the amount of damage she dealt, but we felt those would better suit damage heroes. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to encourage players to support their team by enabling and finishing off opponents, but some of these early ideas were doing a little too much damage. We kept revisiting the status effects inspired by the sun, which kept, uh, which kept themed to her personality uh, and gameplay. Uh, Captive Sun, I think, we, which we kept. Whatever, whatever, who cares? Captive Sun status effects uh, keeps the ultimate ability attack or orientated um, while also encouraging the team to play uh, as many detonations as possible. In a way, it's a damage enhancement effect with a condition uh, and a delay. Okay. From Solar to Iliari. Taking a hero from prototype to game requires a, a ton of collaboration and coordination across almost all of T4. Although many prototypes never make it out of pre production, it's always good to keep them for key learnings. After all, you never know how these abilities may pop back up in game. In the end, we are pretty happy where the solar prototype eventually became Iliari, uh, the last child of the sun. Our team learned a lot from Iliari, and it's incredible to see the community get to know her and play her in game. Thanks all for sharing your feedback. Yeah, I mean, I've really enjoyed playing her. I know I've said this quite a few times before, but it's, she's literally the only hero I've been playing this season. <laughs> like that's literally it i think she's such a good hero i think they've done a really really good job but i also think it's really cool when you get to see behind the scenes and see the way the abilities actually came to be all right guys thank you for listening and watching the video i've been stylosa as ever if you do enjoy the content do like and subscribe and leave me a, a, a wonderful lovely comment below and uh catch you guys in the next one see you soon